There is a plan to end homelessness among veterans in Delaware. We'll talk to the new mayor of Dover and right to work in Delaware. This is the Delaware Way. I'm Larry Menti. Welcome to the Delaware Way. Dover politics are interesting to say the least. They have a new mayor and he joins us now. The new mayor of Dover, Mayor Robin R. Christensen, who was just sworn in. Sir, congratulations. Thank you. And thank you for being here. The former mayor was asked to leave. Can you talk a little bit about what happened from an insider's perspective uh, to, to when the mayor ha was asked to leave? Um, there was uh, some issues with the police department regarding internal promotions and uh, I really can't elaborate on that. Uh, the mayor said he was going home to spend more time with his family uh, and resigned and uh, so I was asked by some friends and neighbors uh, to run on the 19th of June. I was elected mayor, sworn in on the 26th of June and then ran for a full term this spring against the former mayor who decided to come back and well, that's run what for I wanted mayor. to get to and so the former mayor came back to run ag against you yes a and what were the results uh, I won the election by 66 percent of now, the vote so you've you have these uh, some political upheaval you have a mayor that was asked to leave leaves returns to run against you and so you were just sworn into office I, I know you made uh, some promises about bringing business to, to Dover but would job number one be to try to bring everybody together after what's happened in Dover? Well, that's, that's what I saw as job number one, particularly with the police department because uh, their morale was not where it should be. They were really concerned about uh, some of the things that had occurred over there. So uh, day number one on the job, I met with the chief, his staff, and each individual officer in the department on the four different shifts and the individual units told them that, you know, we were, turning a new page uh, in Dover and things were going to be a lot different. I had their back and and that they should just, you know, we should just move forward as a community. And that's the word that I kind of spread throughout the community. We had been in neutral. Uh, everybody was holding their breath waiting for the other shoe to drop. And I just told them, you know, we, we developed a slogan after each of my campaign speeches, I believe in Dover. And then I asked the public, do you believe also? We handed out about 2,000 buttons over the course of the last six or seven months, and people sported them all over. I was really uh, excited one day when the governor showed up when he uh, designated us as a, one of the inaugural downtown development districts. He had a, I believe, in Dover button on. So the catchphrase has caught on. Uh, I think we have a new spirit in Dover, and uh, we're moving ahead. Our, Dover's best days are ahead of us. And, uh, you know, I had the opportunity uh, as a child uh, my grandmother and grandfather had a farm outside of Dover. I, as, a, as a kid who was five years old, I came and spent time on their farm. One of the big things was coming to Dover to, to shop. And I, I had developed a love for Dover. And uh, finally, when we moved here when I was 11, uh, it just continued to grow. And Dover's been my home and home for my wife and my children and my grandchildren. I, I would imagine there's still a jump to make from I believe in Dover and wearing a button to restoring public confidence in government in Dover after what they've been through. Uh, how do you get to that spot? How, how do you get to get the public in Dover to restore, to, to get confidence again in the local government? I just think that because uh, one thing that, uh, that I think that is to our advantage is we're nonpartisan and people uh, who run for office, for council and for mayor, um, present ideas that are in the best interest of the city, not uh, not partisan politics. So uh, we had a little bit of a, a, a head up on that. And the public just has seemed to grab onto that saying, grabbed onto that spirit, and we continue to move forward. So it's a new energy. It's a new day for Dover. Let's talk about uh, why we, we asked you here in the first place. And that's because uh, the governor has uh, announced this initiative to try to end homel homelessness for veterans throughout Delaware and asked for local governments and politicians to embrace this idea, which it sounds like you have. I is there a problem in Dover with homelessness uh, among veterans? Yes, there is. And um, Maria Bynum from HUD uh, was in my office and we were meeting on another issue. And she uh, mentioned to me about the mayor's challenge uh, to aid homeless veterans. And she handed me a pamphlet and I told her I would get back to her. 
That afternoon I had a few minutes in my office and I read about how many veterans are homeless in the United States after they served our country. But what even bothered me even more, Larry, was the fact that there are, are homeless veterans and their families who are homeless. So I got mad, which I have a short temper and don't have a lot of tolerance for things that are really silly. And I thought it was very silly that we had homeless veterans and homeless veterans and their families. And the next morning I signed the mayor's challenge to end homelessness. We have about 93 homeless vets in Dover and Central uh, Kent County of Delaware. And um, we set out to bring an end to that because I think it's unconscionable, first off, with the VA scandal, and then you find out that there are homeless veterans who have, once again, served their country honorably, who have no place permanently to live through no fault of their own. When you say no fault of their own, what do you see as the root sources of homelessness among veterans? I see that they've come back and uh, they're suffering a lot of issues that happened to them in the combat situation of not being allowed to do the job or doing their job. And when they return home, uh, just like the veterans from other wars, they have problems fitting in, problems keeping their jobs. and So it's mental health issues? Uh, a lot of that, substance abuse issues and just issues that, you know, uh, the guys are down on their luck. So. Uh, we decided that we were going to find them permanent housing and we were going to find, uh, give them access to the services that they need to help with the issues that they faced when they've come back and to find them permanent employment. And once again, uh, I don't want to sound corny or anything like that, but to, to get back to sharing the American dream that the rest of us are enjoying. So you, you focused on 93 and you said that's the number for Dover and the surrounding area. If you follow the formula, there are probably more than that, but we were actually able, through the count that we did, then there's a mandatory count of about roughly 93 uh, veterans in the, in the greater Dover, Kent County and area. And you found housing for all 93? Not yet, not yet, but we've taken a challenge, and when I say we, uh, I, I formulated a working group, and uh, you'll probably hear about them shortly, uh, who have undertaken that we're going to end or come close to ending veterans' homelessness in Dover and Kent County by the end of the year. And we're going to continue this conversation when we come back on the Delaware Way with a veteran who is uh, very much a part of this new effort when the Delaware Way continues.